Halloween parade, bro. It's like the one night of the year where we fit in. Get back here. What part of moving the shadows don't you understand? I've never seen anything like this before. Guys, I got a lead on what's going on. Sensei Shredder. This one up was build an army. This is gonna be good! <laughs> you're a rhinoceros! And you're a... Huh. I'm a little piggy. Whoa, whoa. Hey, fellas! What's your name? Casey Jones. Hey. Are you two guys like a thing? If the purple ooze can turn humans into animals... It's on, baby! It could turn us... Into humans. I mean, we don't have to be stuck down here forever. If there's a chance that it make us humans, we're turtles. Whether you like it or not. Gear up, guys. No! Sleep! Tell Brooklyn! No! This isn't working! We keep failing. No! No! Sleep! Sleep! Tell Brooklyn! Keep the team unified. And you shall always succeed. Here we go! Cowabunga! Let's light him up. Go, go, go! No! Sleep! I don't know if this is such a good plan. Don't go getting soft on me now. <laughs> Yes, 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 yes! Oh! Is it coming in kind of fast? Oh! Oh! That went well. No! Sleep! Till Brooklyn! So if I represented Run DMC, I would show this trailer to Paramount and I would say, See? Your movie needs my song. Please pay to use it in the actual film and not just in the first trailer. Because without that retro cool factor, uh, this is starting to look a little bit more like Turtles 1. Now, I liked Turtles 1, and so did a lot of people. It did pretty darn well at the box office, thus the sequel. But everybody, everybody got excited about the sequel because of that first trailer, which seemed to uh, show that the franchise had upped its game, right? Uh, but now it's backsliding. So I, I think that, you know, the turtles need to represent and acknowledge their roots, like where they came from, uh, you know, and, and I would perhaps go, uh, you know, go with a retro soundtrack for the actual film. Like if that kind of music isn't in uh, the movie itself, we could have a little bit of a problem because they made me like it so much already with the first trailer. I mean, the reason I have this truck up here for the starting image is because this action sequence wasn't as cool without it being timed to, again, run, run DMCs. It's tricky. <laughs> so, uh, so this is a, a breakdown of the uh, latest trailer for Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 2. Uh, and the second thing I want to address about the trailer uh, is how easy it is to copy Michael Bay's work. Uh, this is a new director, Dave Green, uh, and the only other uh, feature film he's directed is Earth to Echo, which was like Michael Bay Jr., I guess, to some degree. But the Michael Bayisms in this uh, in this movie, it seems, are really close to the like uh, the uh, original gangsta, you know, Bay himself. And perhaps when he hires people, uh, he's like, here is my playbook. Don't share it with anyone because, you know, he, he, he is successful at the box office. Uh, you know, he, I was very disappointed the other day when The Hollywood Reporter compared uh, Melissa McCarthy to Adam Sandler. I was like, come on, man. You know, she's not there yet. Uh, although I do blame her for continuing to work with her husband, even though clearly that's not a good idea. But uh, Bay hasn't been able to be taken down yet by the hate. Uh, so I guess, you know, that's why he would continue to, you know, manufacture his, his formula, so to speak. Uh, but speaking of Michael Bay's formula, not only does it involve Megan Fox, but you can see it's uh, involves like uh, Transformers-esque components. Uh, and so I, I, was I thought it was interesting to see 
uh, you know, a Transformers kind of, uh, like, spaceship in this movie. Uh, it has a little bit of uh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles cartoonishness to it, but of course there, there was that rumor that they were going to try and, uh, you know, uh, bring all these toys together into a shared universe, G.I. Joe, Transformers. Would Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles be a part of that? I don't know, uh, but it looks like they might be trying to head in that direction. Uh, uh, G.I. Joe 2, by the way, wasn't bad. It was a pretty good rental. I didn't see it in the theater, so I wasn't burned at the box, you know, with the, the full price ticket. Uh, but it, it's not bad. If you need something to watch, it's, it's a pretty solid uh, rental. All right, so uh, the next thing I wanted to talk about, uh, well, not only Tyler Perry, which I, I'm very excited to see him try again to get into a mainstream movie. You know, he comes so close, like Star Trek and Gone Girl, uh, and his parts seem to be getting bigger and bigger, so don't give up, Tyler. Uh, but, and, you know, he's really into this, which I appreciate. Like, he's taking it seriously. Uh, you know, he's not, like, embarrassed to be in the movie, which is great. Uh, but I love the fact that he's like, don't hurt me, Shredder. <laughs> and then the thing to build Shredder's army looks like a toy that you would totally sell at Toys R Us. And they're all taking it so seriously. They're like, this is it. This will build our army. And you can get yours now, kids, for $20 or $19.99. Tell your parents to take us there, uh, to t take you to Toys R Us. So I thought that was hilarious. Really, really funny. Uh, and, but the reason that this is interesting is it, it brings up something a lot of really fun for uh, this movie, which I, I think is they introduced like a first plot point, uh, and I think it's a good one. Uh, so anyway, we'll start out here with uh, our first look at Bebop and Rocksteady pre-transformation. And they look, uh, you know, again, these two actors are also taking this very seriously and embracing the, the cartoonishness of this, but in a, in a cool way, you know, like, they're not just like, oh, whatever, this is for kids, it doesn't matter. They're like, no, this is awesome. The fans have gotten older. They want a good movie too. Let's just make this work for everyone. But anyway, uh, I love when they turn into the to their uh, animal variations. And I, I chose uh, Bebop because I love that. I, I thought he took being a pig really well. Right? I mean, like, a lot of people wouldn't have, like, had such a positive attitude. So I'd be like, Bebop, I like you for that reason alone. But I liked when he said, I'm a little piggy. And also he had a beard for some reason, which I thought was interesting. But he looks adorable. But this ties into, you know, this really kind of, like, I think somewhat touching sequence, right? Uh, where uh, Mikey is like, oh, look, it's the Halloween parade. It's the only time that we can go out and be ourselves. You know, this idea of having to hide. Right? And, you know, he looks so happy and you're like, oh, I can see why maybe you'd be tempted by this opportunity to turn into a human. And I thought uh, that that sequence was handled really well uh, when you have uh, Donnie uh, saying, like, look at this, guys. And, you know, it gives him, like, uh, this human hand. I thought that was pretty cool. And I have to say, as a fan, they better be humans, like... Well, I'm not a huge Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles fan, actually, but I did like the first movie, you know, of this reboot. Uh, but I would love to see them in their human variations. I don't know if they'd be CGI'd or if they would use the actual actors that, you know, either do the voice. Who do you pick? Do you do the voice actors or do you pick the ones that do the motion capture? I think in some cases they're doing double duty, but uh, that would be pretty awesome. But anyway, I, 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 they're probably not going to stay human because that sends a bad message, uh, but I would love for them to spend some time as human. But anyway, speaking of being human, my thought as I was watching this trailer was, well, if you're human, can you do these awesome, like, acrobatics, uh, you know, and action sequences? Because you guys are doing some things that normal humans can't do. So that's something for them to consider. Uh, and then I liked that it played so beautifully uh, when Raphael is like, we're, you know, what do you think lurking in the shadows means? And I was like, aha, nobody told Raphael that the title of this movie is Out of the Shadows. So I thought that was really good, the way they uh, were able to incorporate that into the movie itself. That was funny. I like that. And then, of course, you know, one of those great, you know, Saturday morning cartoon moments uh, where uh, Splinter is telling, uh, um, uh, you know, uh, ooh, Leonardo, sorry. I gotta make sure I get the names right. Uh, Leonardo, like, if you, if you stay together, you shall always win. And I'd be like, that's a bit irresponsible. I mean, you can't guarantee victory every time. Uh, but I guess, of course, you know, in true Saturday morning cartoon fashion, we're not talking about winning the fight or the, ops, you know, the, the task at hand, but winning at life. So good message. All right, so I think that's good. And I'm sure that, you know, maybe one of them will want to be human. You know, see all that you'll see. You know, you've watched enough cartoons to know how this usually plays out. Now we have to talk about Megan Fox. Now one of the things that I liked so much about the first movie was that I thought Megan Fox did a lot to redeem herself. Yeah, she's not a great actress. Uh, she's not as bad as Helen Slater though, Supergirl fans, right? Uh, so Helen Slater, the uh, Supergirl in the one film that they made, uh, plays Supergirl's mother on the CBS series. And she is 
so bad. Uh, but anyway, Megan Fox is passable, right? Uh, but so in the first movie, I thought she actually got to do some journalistic activity. She was kind of like uh, somewhat less smart uh, Lois Lane, right? But I liked that. I liked seeing Megan Fox get a role like that. And Megan Fox recently was complaining. You know, they've talked, there was some coverage lately about hot women complaining about being too hot. And Megan Fox was one of them saying, no one takes me seriously. People think I'm like, a, you know, I'm a serial cheater, even though I've only been in like one relationship for most of my life, etc., etc. But then I was like, hey, Megan, you know, this kind of stuff doesn't help your doesn't help your argument, right? I mean, I know this is why she has a career and why, you know, she infamously auditioned for the first Transformers movie by washing Michael Bay's car. Ew, okay? Uh, but, you know, and not ooh, for poor Megan Fox to some degree, but for Michael Bay for asking her to do it, you know? Got her, got her a decent career, right? Uh, and then she called him a Nazi and it ruined her career. But anyway, <clears throat> they've made up and, well, or have they? Is this her punishment? But the movies are doing well. Uh, but so, I, I mean, I think that if Megan Fox wants to turn a corner and not just be, quote unquote, the hot chick, then he need, she needs to stop doing stuff like this, right? Like, for instance, I like it when she grabs a vial of the uh, the thing that's been created to create this army, this the serum, and she, like, dives under this closing gate. And I'm like, that's pretty cool. But then they cut to her going under, uh, sliding under it, and she's got this ridiculous, like, supermodel face. I'm like, oh, my God, who would slide under... You know, unless you're in like a Victoria's Secret ad campaign or a porno, I have no idea why you would be like, oh, I'm running for my life holding a serum that probably would turn me into an animal if it breaks. Uh, but who cares? I'm sure I'd be like a really hot animal and so it would be awesome. So it just, it was really disappointing. And I don't know why she insists on doing this. Maybe the director is like giving her a problem and she, you know, she should fight him though. She's a big enough name. It's the sequel. They can't get rid of her without, you know, seeming weird. So she should stand up for herself a little bit because if she doesn't, then I think we're all going to believe that this is just her idea and it's just really unlikable. All right, so uh, next with uh, S uh, Stephen Amell, you know, he's obviously playing Casey Jones, big fan favorite. But so far, the only thing that ever makes an impression on me is when Mikey's like, so... Are you, ta are you guys like a thing? And he does it so well with like the head bob. Uh, that's like, I really enjoy it quite a bit. Uh, but that's the only good thing happening between those two characters right now. So I hope that he has some better, uh, Stephen Amell has some better moments in the actual movie. Now, I really liked the end when they did uh, the, the air jump onto the other. I mean, although uh, he has like a, a, a skateboard with, fl with uh, like a rocket on it. And I'm like, well, that's an interesting choice. But then when, you know, I thought it was funny that Raphael was afraid to jump out of the plane. But I was like, if I were Raphael, I was like, where's my skateboard? Uh, but I liked them, uh, you know, doing this kind of like this jump onto a moving airplane. I thought that was very cool. Uh, I liked, uh, it looked neat, right? So I thought it was a good, you know, a good uh, action sequence moment. But then I thought it was hilarious uh, when Raphael landed on the front of the plane. You know, <laughs> I think it's funny that the, for those of us who just like this stuff, you know, we're like, that's hilarious. But, you know, when you look at the f frozen frame, you're like, that's ridiculous. But I'm telling you, it plays in the trailer. So I really like that a lot. Uh, although, of course, they did lose the element of surprise. So it'll be fun to see how that sequence plays out. Uh, so I still think this looks pretty good. Uh, I really miss the music. I, I think that, you know, again, Run DMC's agent should go to Paramount and ask for a big check because uh, now they know they need it. Uh, but they should be going through a catalog of, like, 80s and 90s rap, uh, you know, trying to get something that you know and it's not making it seem too old it's like it's like uh so old it's new again right and like just try you know like uh you know i think it fits with the turtles and you know they could bring some new music in uh, but i mean look at uh, how suicide squad is utilizing older music right really successfully it's like pick what suits your material and it's tricky really suited this material uh, and i'm sure uh, beastie boys would be a good choice uh, but this uh, just did not work. All right, so what do you think of the trailer? Do you agree with me on the music? Uh, what do you think of this compared to the first trailer? Uh, what do you think of Megan Fox? Uh, be sure to share your thoughts down below, and you can check out some other episodes right now. There